Check one, two. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's stand together on this Sunday morning. Amen. I sincerely hope there's more people on the way. Wow. We're running late today. Amen. But we're glad you're here. Amen. Jesus is here, and anything can happen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this day and this service. For each one that's here and each one that's on their way, God, we pray that you would encounter us today. Lord, as we seek after you, Lord, we want to see your face to know you and have a greater relationship with you today. So we pray, Lord, that you would allow the power and the presence of God just to come into this place in a special way this morning. Touch every heart and every life that's here. And don't let one of us leave the same way we came. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Let's clap our hands to the Lord and prepare our hearts. Amen. To go into worship today. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's worship the Lord together. How many knows that every praise belongs to our Father, Jesus Christ? Every word of worship belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Come on, let's clap our hands.
like none other. Amen? Come on. Most all other gods are dead. Our God is alive. There's no God like Jehovah. Hey. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's... You know what? I want to hear you believers. Come on. There's no God like Shout it out if you can't sing. Hey, there's no God. There's none. That's like our battle cry right now. Hey, hey, hey. There's no God like Jehovah. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like not like our God, Sister Kathy. That's why we sing and dance this morning. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Not like our God. Come on, we're gonna bless him this morning. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like my God. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like
every 50 years. Every 50 years was considered the year of Jubilee. And in that Jubilee year, every slave was set free. Every captive was loosed. Every debt was forgiven. I got a mind of Holy Ghost Church or not this morning. How many's been set free? How many's been delivered? Your debts have been paid at Calvary. Come on, somebody. It's a year of Jubilee. Let's celebrate. We're free. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Come on, let's wave our hands and say, There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There
slavery for 49 years. 49 years. And all of a sudden, the year of Jubilee, and your captor comes and says, it's time to let you go. It's time to let you go. You're free. You don't have to be a slave anymore. Some of you have been enslaved to drugs, enslaved to sin, enslaved to your fear and to your past. But God is in this place right now. And he's saying it's time to let you go. Be free. Be free. And whom the Son sets free is free. I'm free indeed No chains are holding me That's who I'm meant to be I'm free indeed In Christ I'm free indeed No chains are holding me It's who I'm Come on, put it up! I'm free! I'm free! I'm free! I'm free indeed In Christ I'm free Now switch it! Switch it now! No chains are holding me you can switch it again.
Hallelujah. We're free. We're free. Woo. Hallelujah. Ah, saints of God, I don't know. I wish I was in a room with free people today. I do. Oh, I wish I was in a room with people who knew how to worship Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, we worship you. We bless your name. Hallelujah. You are excellent, God. You are a mighty God. So I don't know. You're going to have to excuse me because I need to bless my God today. God, I'm here. It's Sunday and I'm alive. God, you could have the cold and chilly hands of death could have been my portion. But you have given me the gift of life. So with that gift today, Jesus, I'm going to bless you. With that gift, I'm going to pour out my praise. With that gift, I'm going to honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we love you. We love you. Jesus. 
king. I remember, I have like, you know, I have memories of being a little girl and, and being so excited for Father's Day. My mom always talks about how she's jealous. I was a daddy's girl all the way. And whatever I would make at school, like it was so important that it was good because I wanted daddy to love it. I wanted him to accept it and to, you know, put it on the fridge or to see it on his night table. It mattered, his reaction. His reaction mattered. When we come into the presence of Almighty God and we say, Jesus, all this is for you. What are you presenting this morning? Did you take time? Did you mold it? Did you fashion it with care? Is your praise something that you worked on all week so that you can bring it and present it to him and say, Daddy, this is for you. I want you to like it. Or be, be honest, did you not prepare anything for your father? And you came and all you have is junk. The cool thing about Jesus is, is both he can take and make it beautiful. He can take a broken and a contrite heart. If that's all you have is a broken heart, you can offer that to him. And he'll take it and he'll mend it. And he'll fix it and give it back to you whole. So when you sing, all this is for you, Jesus, what are you presenting to him? How are you presenting it to him? So in this moment, I just want you to present to him. I want as we are in this moment for the people of God to know what we're focusing on, what we're doing in this moment. 
we're presenting our sacrifice, whether it's a sacrifice of praise, whether it is that broken and contrite heart, whether it is ashes, whether it is mess, whether it is trouble, let's present it to the King. And see what happens when you lay your all on the altar of sacrifice. See what our Father gives you in exchange. God's promises are yea and amen. Young people, his promises are true. Being in Christ is a blessed assurance. There's a peace that comes with knowing him. There's a peace that comes with making him your foundation. There's a confidence that comes in knowing that your heavenly father is a king. And my prayer for you guys this morning is that you know this and that you're able to live it. Because of Jesus, I don't have the testimony of being delivered from drugs and falling into sin. No, I, I have the testimony that God can keep you. He can keep you. You don't have to taste drugs. You don't have to go through seven relationships and be broken and bruised. You don't have to. And you can live a full life un unscarred and marred up from the world. That's my testimony this morning. All this is for you today, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Raise your hands. Let's just worship the Lord and thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. We give you our worship and our praise. God, we come to lift you up this morning. We magnify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 When we were worshiping, I was, I was thinking about the scripture of Paul and Silas in the jail cell. And you know, so many times we have to come in here and it, we're very blessed to have lights and words and chairs. But how would we respond if we were in a dirty cell in dirt on the ground with nobody to, to lead us or nobody to say, hey, sing this course with us. How would we respond then? See, the devil wants to keep us you know, depressed in our circumstances and pushed down so we won't praise God. In here, it's nice to praise God, but actually it's more, I believe it counts more when it's out there, when we're by ourselves, when we have life going on and circumstances surrounding us. In the next little bit, without anybody singing, let's all stand up and let's just give him our praise. Let's just give him, it's called the fruit of your lips. It means without Pastor Nitra leading us, without the praise team, and we thank God for all of that. But let's just, let's just give God back the breath he gave us. Amen. Father, we worship you, Lord. We praise you, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are holy, God. You are magnificent, Lord. I love you, Jesus, and I praise you, God, because who you are because you died for us, because you rose for us, God, because you poured out your spirit for us, Lord, because you went to go prepare a place for us, Lord. We praise you in this house. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We praise you, God. We magnify your name. We worship your name. We exalt your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We give you our we give you the breath you gave us back to you, God. We we voice our breath to you and we say we are thankful. We are grateful, God, that you died for us. God, that we have the opportunity to worship you. That we can raise our hands in confidence, knowing that you will respond to us. Hallelujah. A real loud hallelujah. Because you know what? Silence is the language of defeat. And shouting is the language of victory. I think if the bombers can shout, if the jets can shout, I think we got something to shout about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout out to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got the victory today. Our sins are forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, he has removed your transgression. You don't have to go to a sinner's hell today, but you can be in eternity with Jesus. You don't have to live in sin and live in defeat because you got the victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 It's not a time to be quiet. It's a time to shout. There are miracles in this room right now. There's deliverance in the head. In this room right now, there's healing in this room right now. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost right where you're standing, right now. One more time, lift your hands, lift your voice, and give God a shout. Give Him a shout.
this house this morning. How many believe that God can use you right now? Wave your hand. I want you to turn around and find somebody to, to pray with. Ask them, do you need a miracle? Do you need something from God? Come on, let's do it. We're going to be the family of God here. Don't be shy. You all waved your hands and I believe God can use me. He wants to use you right now. Find somebody to pray with right now. You don't even have to make up the words to say, I'm going to tell you what to say. Just take it by the hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak life over you. I speak life over your situation right now. I speak peace. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I command by the name of Jesus Christ and upon the authority of the word of God, every sick body in this room to be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ I come against sickness pain and disease and I cast it off of the people of God today oh hallelujah 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 I pray for restoration to come into this place I pray for that one to be restored marriages Oh, to be restored. Relationships. Parents with their children. Restoration right now. Uh, brothers and sisters who have had a sharp word. Restoration right now. To come into this house. I come against every spirit of addiction. Oh, right now. I come against alcoholism. Drug addiction. Pornography. My God, those addicted. Lord Jesus. Lord, those addicted to feeling gloom and doom. I loose right now by the holy name of Jesus Christ. I pray for the brokenhearted. Peace would come right now into their lives. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are not a man. Now take somebody by the hand and raise it up over your head together. Take somebody by the hand and majesty. Oh, yes. Worship is majesty. Come on, just praise him with somebody for a minute.
Somebody's feeling better now. You've been in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. have our liturgy and nobody leaves change or nobody leaves without feeling the presence of God and that means it's kind of in vain so how many is blessed to be here today hallelujah amen we're going to wait on you for your tithes and offerings this morning um, sister Diane's in the back if you want to give by debit or credit <clears throat> also we can go to the tithely app in the app store or the play store and on our website, www.thebelieverschurch.ca, under the online giving section, and that will redirect us to the app. And uh, the, the ushers are bringing the offering plates up here to the front. And uh, at this church, we like to march around the front and present our tithe and our offerings. And I just want to encourage you this morning, if you're just giving, if you're giving cash or if you're giving that sort of way, uh, just go in the back, grab an envelope. Maybe put your information on it so at the end of the year you can get your tax receipt back. And when you do your taxes, you get some of that back. So God bless you guys this morning. We are going to sing. Actually, Tion, let's, let's all give Sister Tiana a hand. She's going to be singing this morning for the offering. Come on. Embarrass her. Just kidding.
guys, his hands are probably sore from clapping so much, but it's all good. Amen. We're going to leave you with a couple quick announcements. And uh, at this time, the youth class can be dismissed. And if you're here and you want to go to youth and you're, um, you know, never been there before, you can follow this gentleman right here. Wave your hand, Christian. And he will take you to the youth class, and uh, I'll be right back there. So the youth class is dismissed right now, and um, we have a couple announcements that we're going to do. Uh, before I get to the announcements, we are looking for helpers in the sound booth. Is that right? Amen. Dedicated helpers. Hallelujah. So uh, it's not hard work. We need some camera people. Um, if there's other things, like for the words, Daniel will be grateful and happy to train you. Uh, he's a super nice guy. He won't bite you, that sort of thing. So if you're interested, you can come and talk to me or Daniel, who's standing in the back in the sound booth after service. We'll be glad to help you. Because we, we got some actually Sunday, like Tiana, who just sang, and uh, Wisdom here, Pastor Osei's son. Some of the Sunday school kids doing... doing uh, the sound and doing the camera and stuff like that. So we want some, you know, older folks doing that in the service. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So on Wednesday is our Wednesday night revival service. Uh, that's at 7 o'clock. Uh, I encourage you, if you haven't been, we, it's actually almost a different crowd on Wednesday night. It's, it's, it's like a, almost another church. It's pretty cool. So come check it out. That's at 7 on Wednesday. And then Saturday at 7 o'clock. Man, did we have an awesome prayer meeting in here last night. If you weren't here... Um, you know, I can tell you until I'm like red in the face, but come and pray with us. It's a blessing to pray as the family of God together. And uh, God honors that and he blesses that. Um, I was actually going to make a little joke. I'm, 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 don't do it, she says. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm going to write a book. It's going to be called, You Might Be Pentecostal If... And then last night, if, if uh, you might be Pentecostal if your hairdo gets all messed up. Or you might be Pentecostal if, if the Holy Ghost moves and pastor doesn't get a chance to preach. Come on, somebody. Or you might be Pentecostal if the musicians can, can't read sheet music, but they can tear it up on the instruments. Come on. Hallelujah. So that's uh, Saturday at 7. And then also conference. But I believe pastor will talk to you about that. And uh, God bless you guys this morning. In Jesus' name. And just on the just to piggyback the heels of that for all of you who are in the believers church choir tomorrow please don't forget tomorrow at 6 30 this is for the group that did the vox level one because uh, we will be singing on the 30th that's the sunday morning of conference so all of the choir tomorrow and actually the sound people who are involved with sound need to be there tomorrow and also on the following Monday, where we're going to really try and do this well for the conference, whether it comes to sound, whether it comes to visual, and, and for the voices and instrumentalists as well. Amen? Praise the Lord. We have had some church in this place today. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, if you're going home grumpy, that's your own fault. You're going home alone. I'm staying here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. If you are a guest at Believer's Church, we welcome you. Let's put our hands together for all our guests that are with us this morning. In case you haven't noticed, we are serious about the move of God here at Believer's Church. Hey, Amen. This is what we pray for. This is what we fast for seek the Lord for. Amen. It's God can do more than we ever can imagine if we'll just let him do it. Amen. Praise God. I want to make a, a few more just brief announcements and I'm going to, I know time has really gone by. So I want to leave you with just a brief word uh, this morning. <clears throat> Praise God. I, I want to make mention that I've had a, a fresh altar worker seminar. We've got five new altar workers that are going to be helping in the altar, praying with, with folks. Uh, beginning in the service this morning, and uh, so we're excited about that. We uh, put our usher team together a few months ago. How many I think our ushers are doing an amazing job? I am so proud of that team, and uh, they are they they are just ambassadors of this church, and uh, we thank God for them. And now we're putting our altar team back together again, and we are excited about that. I told somebody in the meeting last night, I said, we are just preparing 
amen, for the great revival that God is giving us, amen, and building the base big enough, strong enough, amen, to receive what God wants to give us here at Believer's Church, amen. Praise God. Sister Elsa, would you stand up? I, I, I left mine on my desk. I was wearing it. Uh, we have fancy turnarounds so everybody can see. We got fancy new ID tags. Uh, they are really nice, professional looking for our staff members, especially our staff that are going to be uh, interacting with, uh, with guests and people as they're coming into the building. So if you have a question or anything, you just find somebody with a tag on and they'll be happy to help you. Amen. Uh, if you are interested in getting involved in Sunday school, we are revamping our Sunday school department. You have to be a member of our church. You have to have repented and been water baptized and uh, living for Jesus Christ. Uh, then we are going to be having a, a Sunday school meeting directly after this service in the, in the boardroom. If you don't know where that is, you can ask somebody with a tag. They'll tell you. Uh, and uh, the good thing about Sunday school is we're revamping it. We've got some new people getting on board with us. And uh, in the new way of doing things, you will only have to teach, I think, at the most two Sundays uh, a month. And so you can teach and be involved in Sunday school and still have two Sundays, amen, in the service. Is that all right? Praise God. And so we are going to be doing some painting back there. We're going to make it look like kids' world. It's a very, very exciting. So if you want to be part of Sunday school and this uh, restoration, rejuvenation, whatever you want to call it, now's the time to get in. You can be part of it from the ground up. Amen. I need help from somebody. Uh, Sister Zanya has gone back to work full time and we've uh, she's just been doing a lot around here but some of those things she's just not able to keep up with anymore I need somebody to commit you have a church key you have a code to the building <clears throat> excuse me and you are available one one Monday a month to come and be here on lock the doors and be here for the mat uh, people uh, those who bring our cleaning supplies that sort of thing you can come one Monday a month and be here and let the, that person in and uh, and take care of that for us. If there's anybody with a with a key that's willing to do that, if you want to just wave your hand at me right now, you can do that. Or if you want to talk to me after church, amen. Not all together now, only one person. All right. Who am I looking at back? Sister Vivian, is that you? All right. Thank you so much. Amen. Give her a hand for that. We're on. Praise the can I get a sound person up here and change these batteries for me? They're dying. Amen. You know you've had church when the batteries give up the ghost. Praise the Lord. Woo! Conference, October 28, 29, and 30th. Amen. Here at Believers. Thank you, brother. And uh, we are looking for a great time in the presence of the Lord. And uh, Pastor uh, Steve Fender is so excited to be coming. This is his first time ever preaching in Canada, and he's excited about it. I think he'll be as excited as he can be until he gets there and realizes how cold it is. He'll be excited to go home at the end, I'm sure. But he's excited to be with us. We're excited to have him. It's going to be a great time in the presence of the Lord. He actually called me the other day, and he said, he's a pastor. He said, there's a, a, a pastor friend of mine from San Francisco that is flying up to be in conference with us in, in Winnipeg. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Who knows? Who knows? Thank you. Can we give our sound guys a hand? Uh, we put them through a workout here this morning. <laughs> Praise God. So who, who knows just what God is going to do at that conference? So it's a Friday night, a Saturday night, and Sunday morning. There'll be no Wednesday night service during that service. And uh, so it's just the three services, Friday night at 7, Saturday night at 7, Sunday morning at 11. We've even got, uh, done away with the Sunday night service. So you can go home and snooze Sunday night and get ready for work the next day. So it's only three services. So we're asking you to come, but not only to come, but to bring somebody with you. Let's pack this house out and see what God will do here for us. Amen. Praise God. Oh, my. Put the timer on the clock. I'm going to try and keep this around 20 minutes. Everybody said hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 21. That's a challenge. Can I preach in 20 minutes? Let's see. 
1 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 8. And David said unto Himelech, Is there not here on hand a spear or a sword? For I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. So the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, there it is, wrapped up in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will take that, then take it. For there is no other except that one here. And David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. I want to preach to you this morning on this topic. No sword like that sword. Father, I pray that you would speak to us from your word right now. Lord, that you would help me to do a good job in a short time. Lord, that you would speak to your people. Lord, that your presence would continue to manifest in this room. Lord, let encouragement come here for somebody. Somebody who felt like giving up, turning around, going back. Lord, will leave this place swinging their sword. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. David, many of you know the story of David. He was a shepherd boy. And God had rejected Saul from being king because Saul couldn't do what Saul was told. And he kept disobeying God. And so God rejected him, and he sent the man of God to Jesse's house to anoint a new king. And it was there he anointed David to be king over the people of God. And uh, although he was anointed king, he was still uh, in the sheepfold, still herding sheep. He was anointed to be king, still smelling like sheep. And uh, what, a, what a, a frustrating place to be, to have an anointing on your life, but but not able to ever know when that's going to happen for you. And so it was that while he was waiting in the process, somebody say process, while he was waiting in the process to become king, he a battle broke out between the Philistines and, uh, and the people of God. And the people of God were hiding in their trenches. They were afraid to come out because... There was a giant of Gath. The Bible says he was a champion of the Philistines, a man of war from his youth who came out. And the Bible says that the battle was set in array, that the Philistines were on one mountaintop and the children of Israel were on another mountaintop. And this giant, they don't really know how tall he was, somewhere between 9 and 13 feet tall. I preach him 13 feet tall every time. I've never met a giant in my life, Brother Moses, that wasn't every bit of 13 feet tall. And so I believe he was big. He was a bad guy. And so he would step out on the mountain, and every morning he would yell, Choose you a man! And send him out to fight me. If he defeats me, we will be your servants. But if I defeat him, you will serve the Philistines. And so this went on, and even Saul, the king, who was head and shoulders taller than every other man in Israel, was hiding in his tent away from Goliath. Everybody was afraid. Jesse sent David because his brothers were in the war. Jesse sent David, go check on your brothers. Take them some bread. Take them some cheese. Give them some food. And bring back the report to me of how the fight is going. David gets there. He hears Goliath. Choose you a man. And he's waiting for some brave soldier out of the host of Israel to step out. Maybe it would be his elder brother Eliab. Maybe it would be one of his other brothers who had gone to war. But as soon as he heard the giant cry, he saw the people of Israel running for cover. He went to one of the soldiers that was nearby and said, What's going on here? Why is nobody fighting? And I like what he said. And I, I was uh, getting ready to, to preach on this topic. Uh, hey Amen. He said this. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And he said, I'll go and fight. And so they took him in to, go to Saul, King Saul, and said, Hey, we found somebody who's willing to go fight Goliath. I'm sure Saul was excited. Bring this mighty warrior in. And so they call for David. Come on in here, David. Saul wants to see you. Saul expected to some, some seven foot 
called mighty man, mighty warrior to come in dressed in head to toe in his, in his battle uh, array with his sword and shield. And in comes pimply faced David, 17 years old, never fought anybody except a wild animal. David said, I'll go. Saul said, you're not able to go. David said, I'm going in away. Saul tried to give him his armor. Here, put on my helmet. Here, put on my breastplate. Take my shield. Here, use my sword. And David said, I can't do it this way. I've never used a sword before. I've never used helmets and breastplates and shields before. Just give me my slingshot and five smooth stones and I'll go fight the giant. And so David went out and Goliath was roaring, Choose you a man. And here comes David still going through puberty, his voice cracking. Isn't that embarrassing? You go out to fight the giant, here I am. And Goliath looks at him and got even more angry. Who am I, dog, that you send a little boy out here with a stick to drive me home? He looked at David and said, I'm going to tear you apart limb by limb, and I am going to feed you to the dogs, and whatever's left of you, the birds are going to come and devour. He was laying some smackdown talk on David, but I come to tell you when the devil begins to talk to you, you got to learn to talk right back. David David said, you come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel, whom you have defied. And this day the Lord is going to give you into my hand. And the battle was set. And Goliath went running towards David. And David went running towards Goliath. Amen. David put a rock in the sling. He slung it at the giant. Hit him in the forehead. Knocked him down. He wasn't dead. I preached a message on this one time. Stop knocking your giants out and kill them. Because if he would have just left him, Brother John, he'd have got up again. He might have not have been a threat for the rest of the day, but he'd have recovered and become a threat tomorrow. So David, who had never used a sword, ran up and realized he's not dead, he's just stunned. And he took a sword, the sword from Goliath, a sword he had never used before, a sword that was too big for him. And he cut the head off of Goliath with Goliath's own sword. Fast forward a while. David is now uh, in the palace because the people after he had killed Goliath, they were rejoicing and they were singing. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands. Man, that's a really cool song, unless you're Saul. Saul didn't like that song for some reason, Brother John. It wasn't his favorite worship chorus. And so now Saul, or David is in the, is in the palace serving Saul. But Saul is secretly trying to kill him. And David learns of the plot of the king that he's going to kill you, David. You had better get out of here. And so David fled for his life. And he's on the run. The king's army is after him, wanting to kill him, wanting to take his life from him. And David has nothing. And he finds himself, amen, before the priest at the, at the uh, tabernacle. And he said, hey, I need a weapon. Is there a weapon here? Is there a spear? Is there a sword in this place? It's a funny thing. You go to church looking for a gun. Pastor Buster, you got a gun in the office I could borrow? No. He goes to the house of God. Is there a weapon here? But the thing is, this sword of Goliath had become a monument. It had become an artifact. There was testimony, come on somebody, attached to this sword. And so they put it in the house of God behind the ephod 
as a place of reverence and a place for remembrance so that they could always look at that sword and know that God gave us a great victory with this sword over the Philistines by the hand of David. Are you with me? And the priest says to David, we got no swords here. There's no spears here. This is the house of God. There's no weapons in here. Oh, just a minute. There is one sword here. It's Goliath's sword. Remember the one? And he tells them the story like David somehow forgot. Remember the one that time you killed that 13-foot giant and you cut his head off? We've got that sword. Goliath's sword is here. And he pulled it out and was holding it in front of David. And David saw the sword. Amen. And he said, oh, there is no sword like that sword. Give it to me. A guy who used a slingshot now uses a sword. A slingshot was all that was needed when you're a shepherd. But when you're a warrior, you need a sword. You didn't hear me now. The weapons God allowed you to use yesterday are not going to be the weapons he's given you today. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> he brought you through, amen, to make you mightier. I've said this before, but let me say it again this morning. The lie of the devil to you is this, that everything you go through takes something away from you. Not so. The lie of the devil is every battle you fight makes you weaker. Not so. Everything you go through and come out victorious over, something is added to you. Every fight you fight makes you stronger in God. Somebody needs to say, I'm not weaker today than I was. I'm stronger today than I was yesterday. I'm stronger today than I was last week, last month, last year. I am mighty through God. Each battle you win adds something to you. And there was an emotional attachment to this sword. Memories came flooding back as he held that sword. In David's lowest moment, running for his life from the very king that he rescued, he stands there holding the sword of Goliath and he is reminded of his greatest victory. I'm sure as he stood there, the events of that faithful day flashed before his eyes. Goliath on one mountain, him on the other. Goliath mocking the two running towards each other. David flinging that stone. Goliath falling to the ground. David taking Goliath's own sword, cutting off his head. I'm sure he remembered the celebration. I'm sure that little song came. Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. He remembered it all. And he said, give me that sword. There's no sword like that sword. You see, there was really nothing special about that sword. It was a sword like every other. It had been fashioned like probably most other swords of that time. It didn't have superpowers. It wasn't a magic sword. It was a sword. But what made it special was the testimony that was attached to it. And as David saw that sword at the lowest point in his life, he was reminded of the faithfulness of God. He was reminded of the victories that he had won. Oh, come on, somebody. He was reminded that if God brought me through that, he will bring me through this. And he said, give me that sword. Give me that. I come to preach to somebody today that what you need is already in front of you. What you need is already in your hand. The thing you need to overcome this battle, this devil, this struggle, this warfare you, you have, you already have possession of it. It is your testimony. 
Does anybody, could I get a little bit more monitor if I could? Does anybody have a testimony in the house? Does anybody have a testimony in this house today of the faithfulness of God? That God picked you up. He saved your soul. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. He healed your body. He touched your mind. He helped you when you were unhelpable. You couldn't pay a bill, but God provided for you. There were no groceries in the cupboard, but God provided for you. Does anybody in this house have a testimony of the faithfulness of God in your life. If you do, you have the sword you need in your hand to fight the battle that lies in front of you. See, the devil likes to tell you that this fight is going to be different than the last fight. The devil's smart, but he only has so many tricks. Hello? Hello? And the fact of the matter is he just keeps using the same things over and over and over again. And the reason he keeps using the same thing is because they keep working. Hello? They keep working. Why does he use discouragement? Discouragement is the favorite, most favorite weapon he has. Why does he keep using it? Because it works. Not me, pastor. No, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Didn't you see my little dance? I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And then tomorrow, they put sugar in your coffee and you are a sugar twin. That old devil, the warfare is real. The struggle is real. Oh, hell's against me today. I had one of those days yesterday. You know why I can preach like this? Because I've been there. I had one of those days yesterday. Everything that could go wrong was going wrong. And then you get to the place, you stub your toe. That old devil! No, you're the one who put the coffee table there. <laughs> Are we all right? We doing okay? Lord, help me. The time is good. That's a quick 12, 20 minutes. And, but I come to tell you, if you've had victories in your past, you have what it takes to have victory today. You have a testimony. I said you have a testimony. If you fast forward to Samuel chapter 30, you'll find out David and his men are still on the run. Amen. And they they build a a tent or a camp and and the Amalekites come in and destroyed it and took everything they had. One of my favorite scriptures, amen, is in 1 Samuel 30 verse 7. And David said to the priest, pray, bring me the ephod. And they brought him the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, shall I pursue after this troop? And shall I overtake them? Amen. And the Lord said, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. But before you get to the prayer, Do we have it up there? Go up to verse 6. David was greatly distressed. Oh, here we go. The people spoke against stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and every and his daughters. But David strengthened. In the King James Version, it says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. I come to tell you today, when the devil's discouraging you, when your family is discouraging you, when your neighbors are discouraging you, when your boss is discouraging you, you can encourage yourself in the Lord. Because you have a testament. Give me that sword. That sword that killed Goliath will kill this giant. The sword that brought me through yesterday will bring me through today. Why are you panicking when you've got the sword of Goliath? Why are you stressing when God has brought you this far? Why are you worried? When God has never failed you, the fact that you're still breathing is fact that you've had victory. The fact that you're still here this morning is is proof enough, amen, that God has been faithful to you. Oh my, oh my, I've got 15 seconds. 
I'm at my last scripture. Will you give me like five more minutes? Revelation 12, 7. And there was war in heaven. Hear it now. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Hear me now. And prevailed not. Wasn't it Pastor Neger who said already in this service, you're on the winning side? There was a war in heaven, but they prevailed not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused before our God day and night. Listen now. And they, and they, who's they? The saints of God. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. I thank God for the blood. I like singing about the blood. I like preaching about the blood. I like worshiping up over the blood. And we thank God for the blood that was shed without the shedding of blood. There is no remission of sin. It's through his blood that there is salvation. It's through his blood there is deliverance. It's through his blood that we're healed. It's through his blood, amen, that the price has been paid for us to be saved today. But there's a second part, amen. We thank God for the blood, but you've got to add your testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Does anybody have a testimony in this house today? God's been faithful to me. All my life, the songwriter said, you have been faithful. All my life, you've been so, so good. I'm talking about your testimony. Would you stand with me this morning? I'm not going to preach in this church. Not next Sunday. Somebody else is preaching. The Sunday after, we're in conference. The Sunday after, I'm preaching away in... In, a, in the States. It'll be a month before I stand in this pulpit on a Sunday morning again. So let me tell you, before I get to come back and preach to you on another Sunday morning, that your testimony is enough. That sword that's been standing in the corner or maybe mounted over the fireplace in your life Maybe some dust has gathered on it. You talk about what God did back then while you're struggling today. Oh, Lord. You like to tell the stories of what God did 10 years ago or five years ago for you or even six months, but today you're full of doubt, fear, and anxiety. I'm preaching to somebody today. Take that sword down off the mantle dust it off and declare that if God has brought me through if God did it for me yesterday he can do it for me today if God did that for me who am I talking to here this morning if God did that for me last month last year I have a testimony and I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that God not only can but God is is going to do it for me again. Somebody clap your hands in this house. There's no sword like that sword. Give it to me. And David left that place. Amen. And he had some hard battles to fight. But can I tell you, David sat on the throne just like God said he would. Hallelujah. David was victorious just like God said he would be. There's no sword like the sword that you have. Have. Amen. It's already.
already in your life. It's already in your possession. You've just got to pull it out again and say, devil, I want to remind you today of who I am and what I've been through and where I come. Oh, you're not dealing with some wimp. I'm a saint of God from the inner city, buddy. You want to throw down, you're going to get cut bad. Oh, come on, somebody. Maybe you drove in here from the burbs, but can't you just get in touch with your inner city a little bit? Come on. You come to me with a spear and a sword, Goliath. I'm going to take that sword out of your hand. I'm going to take your head off it, and I'm going to use it from that day forward to take the head off every enemy that comes my way. You need to look at the devil today. Get a little bit of Winnipeg in you. Say, what's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? I was told if anybody ever says that, don't turn around, just run. What's up, buddy? I'm a child of God. And I'm not afraid of hell. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I've got power. I've got anointing. I've got the Word of God. I'm covered by the blood. Come on. Is there somebody who believes what this preacher is preaching today? There's no song. I have a testimony. And because I do, I'm going to come out of this victorious. Hallelujah. Oh, let's clap our hands in this house this morning. Oh, somebody clap your hands in this house. Hallelujah, the devil's had your back against the wall, but you're coming out today. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Amen. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strong. Devil, you cannot defeat me. Woo, my God, my God, my God. My Lord. I feel the spirit of the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. We need to sing. Can we transition to something victory? Something with victory? My God, let's do it. What I want us to do in the closing of this service, I want everybody who will right now, just don't wait. Don't wait for them to start singing. Don't wait for them to hit your favorite note. Everybody who will, let's get around the front. We're just going to sing a song of victory. We're going to we're going to swing our sword a little bit, and we're going to leave this house with victory today. Come on, let's get around the altar. Let's get around the altar. Let's end this service with victory this morning. Let's end this service with a shout. Let's end this service with a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to sing something fast. I don't want nothing slow, something fast. I don't want to chase the devil like this. I'm, I'm going to chase him as fast as I can out of here. Come on, somebody.
I need you guys. Everybody from here over to come this way. We're going to create some space. Just go that way a little bit. Everybody's like, oh, Lord, what is he going to make us do? All right, you with me? Now turn this way towards that wall. We're going to learn how to line dance. No, I'm just kidding. The Lord just spoke this to me. There are people here that the devil has backed you up. You used to be there. You used to have authority there. Oh, oh. You used to be blessed there. But life happened. And it kind of backed you up a little bit. But we're going to sing this. God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness. I want you to take two or three steps. We don't have a lot of space. But as we're singing that, I want you to take a couple of steps in, in faith and in the realm of the Spirit here this morning. And I want you to take two or three steps. And with every step you take, I want you to reclaim everything the devil has taken from you. Are you ready? Let's do You can do it in your seats if you want. Let's do it together.
And victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Well, victory today is mine. I said, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. today. Take that sword and swing it all week long. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. 
I guarantee you every Philistine you come in contact with will recognize that sword. Oh, that was our, the, the sword of our champion. And now it's in the hand of David. Oh, my, my, my. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night for our series on Battle Ready. God bless you.